In this video I'm going to show you how to show if an argument is valid or not using an Euler diagram. The argument that we're looking at is has these two premises and a conclusion. Um, we're going to assume that the premises are true and try to see if the conclusion will follow from the premises. Does the, do the premises imply that conclusion, assuming they are true? So, um, let's first translate the argument into logic symbols. Starting with the first premise, we have all persons living excellent lives are persons cherishing living. We have two parts to this statement. There's all the people that live excellent lives. We'll, we'll represent that part of the statement, people who live excellent lives with the letter E. So that's to represent all people that live excellent lives. And then people who cherish living will represent with the letter C. So then what this is saying in logic symbols is if it's a person that lives an excellent life, then it's a person that cherishes living. That's what this statement is applying. All people who live excellent lives cherish living. The second premise, all folks who live well are persons cherishing living. So we'll let W represent people who live well. So W implies someone that cherishes living. That's what this statement is saying in logic symbols. People who live well are then people who, if it's a person that lives well, then it's a person that cherishes living. The conclusion says all folks who live well are persons living excellent lives. So if it's a person, can we then conclude that if it's a person that lives well, then it's a person that lives an excellent life. So here our argument is assuming that the premises are true, P implies C. If P implies C and W implies C, together does that imply W implies E? Does that mean W? So if P and C and if P and W both imply C, does it follow that W then implies E? That's the argument. So assuming those two premises are true, can we make this conclusion. So we're going to use an Euler diagram to decide whether or not we can make the conclusion. So according to the first premise, people who live excellent lives are a subset of the people who cherish living. These people who, who live ex and pe all folks who live well are, are also a subset of people who cherish living. So it's basically saying all people who live excellent lives are a subset of the people who cherish living. And all folks who live well are a subset of people who cherish living. So we can make two circles here. Have the inner circle be the subset, which is people who live excellent lives, of the set of people who cherish living. So Anyone inside this circle is someone that lives an excellent life. Anyone inside this bigger circle is someone that cherishes living. The second premise says all folks who live well are persons who cherish living. So as long as the, the folks who live well cherish living, they're inside this circle, then that's true. So it could be that the person who lives well is here, or they could be someone in this set also, or they could be part way in both sets. So we satisfy both premises with any one of these. We satisfy that second premise with any one of these options, right? These are all examples of people that would cherish living, that live well and would cherish living. The conclusion says all folks who live well are persons who who live excellent lives. That's saying that the people who live well should also be a subset of excellent lives. That's saying that people who live well should all be inside this set, the people that live excellent lives. But we can see from these two examples, from this example and this example, 
here are people who actually live well and do not live excellent lives. Some, all, all these people do not live excellent lives and some of these people do not live excellent lives. So here's something that, here's a case that satisfies that second premise and does not satisfy the conclusion, that contradicts the conclusion. So that would mean that the argument is invalid because there exists somebody there may exist somebody that is a person that lives well and cherishes living that doesn't live an excellent life. So there we proved the argument is invalid because the conclusion doesn't follow from the premises being true. This is just basically that conditional, the general conditional. Remember the case where the conditional statement was false was where the premise, where the antecedent was true and the consequent was false. In this case, our premises are is our antecedent and our conclusion is our consequent. So that makes this argument false. Having a case where both premises are true, but the conclusion is false.